Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at signed distance fields and how we can implement them to create some quite cool and nifty effects. So first off I'm just going to create a new project and I'm already going to have a photo editing program ready to go in the background. In this case I'll be using Photoshop but you could also use any photo editing program of your choice that can save in a PNG format because we will need to do some masking later. So for this tutorial I'm just going to use the face mesh to demonstrate how SDF fields can work in our patch editor. So I'm just going to go add object, add my face mesh and then I'm just going to create a new material and this new material I'm just going to rename spiral just so I know what the effect is I'm going to be achieving. I'm going to change this material's type to be flat and I'm going to change its colour to be a bright yellow because I'm kind of going to go for the kind of inspired by the uh, Smiler Ride in the UK style so that kind of weird super bright glow is what I'm trying to go for here and then I'm just going to hit this little arrow next to texture to bring up my patch editor and that will now link into my diffuse texture so sign distance fields are basically a way where we can create shapes and transform those shapes and fields uh, obviously between one state and another so for example we could just create shapes and masks in Photoshop or in any other program but we could also use shapes to assign and transform our vertices and uh, effects within the patch editor so to sort of show this in action I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to add an SDF star so I'm looking for the SDF star and insert that and I'm just going to link this up to an SDF twist field like so and then I'm also going to link this to an SDF mix because I'm going to be wanting this to transition between two states. So I'm going to take this star shape state and transition it between that to another shape. So in this case, it'll be transition between a circle and a star, for example. And I'm just going to add a step and then link my step to my diffuse texture. So as you can sort of see now on the screen, it's created this SDF cutout of a star. So I could adjust the number of twists. I could go for like example A to give it more twisting to that star shape. Or if I wanted to have no twists, I could just be zero and it would just be our generic star. I could change the number of points on my shape. So let's say I go for 12. So this creates this kind of cutout sun effect. Uh, I'm just gonna add my twist back in and I'm also gonna make that 12. So I've got this spirally effect. And what I want it to do is I want it to spiral to be animated. So to do that, I'm just going to add another SDF shape. So in this case, I'm going to add an SDF circle. And I'm going to link that to my SDF mix uh, field, like so. And now we need to add some animation in there. So to do that, I'm just going to use a simple loop animation command. I'm going to have it set to mirrored so it plays forwards and backwards. And I'm going to link my progress to a transition field. And I'm going to change this transition field to be a number because then I'm going to change between two states. And then link this to my mix field on my SDF mix patch. So as you can see now, we should have this sort of animation that sort of has a spiral coming in and then coming out. I'm just going to adjust my SDF star field radiuses. So my outer radius, I'm just going to make. 0.2 and my inner radius I'm going to change to be 0.01 for example so this makes it a more complete twist as you can see I can change my duration of my animation down here so I could make it play over five seconds so it's not quite as fast so we've got this kind of spiral effect here uh, but if I wanted to make this a little bit more unique, what I could do is from this SDF mix here, but before my step, because I'm going to have to keep this step and diffuse texture linked, 
is I could add something like an SDF repeater. So this will repeat uh, all our SDF fields prior to this uh, point, like so. And I just link my SDF to my SDF on the repeater and then link that back to my step. And now as you can see, we've got this bit more sort of jazzy effect going on that can quite easily emulate a kind of more tribal effect uh, pattern, for example. I could adjust my uh, mirroring points. I can also adjust the size of my mirror. So you can start to create this kind of, uh, once this loops back around, this sort of wave effect can be created. And see it. Uh, oh, there we go. That was a bit too, uh, bit too fast. I think. Let's just make increase our Y value a little bit. I'm going to decrease my duration to be two seconds, just so it's a bit more apparent what I'm doing. So you can see, you can just by using SDF fields, we can create unique effects that transition over time. So let's say I wanted this mask to not be all over the entire face, for example. I could always go back into my materials and I can always add an alpha. So in this case, I'm just going to turn on my alpha field. And I'm going to put up my photo editing program of choice and I'm just going to create a small square canvas. So in this case, I'm just going to go 500 by 500, for example. Unlock that, delete that shape okay create a new field and then delete that layer Ooh. there we go and I'm just going to create a circle holding shift to keep its properties restrained center this into my canvas my mouse stops switching around so much and then I can just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, increase this blur field, like so. Save this white circle onto my machine. I'm just going to call this face circle. So my keyboard's off at an angle at the moment. I'm going to save this as a PNG to keep the transparency. Where is my PNG on this format? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's save this. Export as a PNG. And face circle. Save this into my desktop somewhere. Just hit save. Then I could just bring that mask into my project, apply that mask to my alpha material. And now when it plays, it should have a more of a kind of feathered uh, effect to the edges. Uh, and this is just basically a, just a very small insight to what SDFs are capable of. Obviously you can do a lot more with them and we'll possibly look at SDFs more in more detail in future videos. Uh, but for now, this is just an overview of SDF fields and how you can use them to create bespoke shapes quite simply and easily just in your patch editor. I hope this has been of some use to you guys and girls and I hope to see you again next time. Uh, remember you can always follow my channel for more tutorial videos, like and subscribe and comment and I'll try and get back to you. Or if you want to um, support the channel uh, more you could always follow the Patreon page and throw a few coins my way to help support uh, future content delivery. But don't ever feel like you have to because I'll always upload at least a video a week onto this channel and it's always freely available. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.